Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, depending on where you are, and thank you for joining us today. We have a large crowd here today, which really tells me that many organizations are actively searching for better ways to manage and control business continuity in their data centers. So thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Iran Nivne. Um, in this 30-minute webinar, we will give you a taste of what some of the best data centers in the world have been doing to avoid downtime and data loss and ensure 24-7 business continuity. Our presenter today is Doron Pinhas, Chief Technology Officer for Continuity Software. Doron is an expert in business continuity with over 20 years of experience in data center and storage management, as well as networking architecture and real-time application design. Doron is literally in daily conversations with leading organizations worldwide, so I'm sure many of you on the line here have already met Doron. And I'm really glad we are able to get 30 minutes of his time to share this experience, his experience and this information with you. At the end of the presentation, we will take questions from the audience. So please feel free to submit your questions throughout the presentation using the questions panel on the right side of your screen. I'm sure everybody's schedule is extremely busy. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Doron now. Okay, thank you, Iran. You're being too gracious. Uh, so that's our agenda. We'll review briefly existing challenges in managing high availability and DR environments, both from the technical and process standpoint, and then spend the majority of the time discussing a little bit uh, how we have found successful enterprises to manage their environment, actually showing you a, a use case, and I hope it will be beneficial to you all, ending with the Q&A. And uh, just before diving in, a few words about us. So ever since 2004, Continuity has been pioneering in the area of uh, high availability and disaster recovery, risk detection and management. And in that unique capacity, we were fortunate enough to work with some of the world's largest enterprises across all verticals, which gives us a unique view of uh, what challenges people have, what are they struggling with, and more rarely, what are the effective methods for solving some of those challenges, and that's exactly what we'll want to share with you today. And with that, I'd like to begin with what we typically refer to as the symptom, the technology challenge. And so uh, some of you have already seen me present those slides, but basically no one these days can afford downtime or data loss. And basically that's why you build the right infrastructure, which will involve lots of technology, likely from multiple vendors around local high availability, which will involve clustering, high-end storage, SAN, redundancy, and uh, what have you. Uh, and then moving on to more geographical scenarios, including replication, hot, warm, or even cold data centers, uh, and so on and so forth. So we end up with a pretty complex configuration that can vary from one enterprise to the other. And now we have to manage it to successfully recover when there is a problem. Problems can be either localized or uh, uh, more general, like full-fledged disasters. So the problem most of the enterprises we work with voice is configuration management, or in uh, other terms, configuration drift. So we now basically have a pretty complex infrastructure involving uh, hundreds, sometimes thousands, sometimes more servers and applications tied in uh, with replication and clustering and, and failover settings, and that data centers keeps on changing all the time. Probably, uh, as the saying goes, one of the only constants in IT is change. So we will find servers being decommissioned, new storage being added, patches applied, servers consolidated, and so on, all the time. Every time we apply or introduce such a change to the data center, we now must take care that it is uniformly applied to all the relevant components across all the relevant IT silos, which is challenging in itself, 
introducing the risks that some, some things will fall in between the cracks. But even if changes are applied, the next challenge we now face is how do we know it's actually working? And the common approach is to run periodical disaster recovery testing, which is a great practice, by the way. We have nothing against it. The, the only problem is that it cannot be done as frequently as changes are made. So what our experience tells us is that the industry averages around once a year. And whereas some customers will be able to test it more frequently, it doesn't really go much more frequent than that. So with change going on all the time, and with very infrequent testing, it's no wonder that uh, many of the customers we meet, especially when we first begin to work with them, uh, is that they had real issues in production, in between tests, real production issues, in environment that were supposed to recover, and the system still failed. And you can actually search or Google for the word outage and see for yourself. It happens all the time. So that's uh, the technology aspect, and it can take various forms and shapes like this uh, real story in which we have a database striped across multiple sand volumes. It was extended over time, and we ended up with some of the data not being replicated. Now, the, the problem here is that we don't really notice it until we try to fail over. So hopefully, that's our annual DR test, but if that happens in between, we'll just lose our data, or just uh, one more example, whereas we have production and recovery environments, but can we make sure that we have a recovery server set up and configured at all, and, and if we do, does it have enough capacity? Um, does it have the same operating system version and patches and updates and startup parameters and so on? So there are thousands of things that can literally go wrong. So without being able to test the systems, we are bound to encounter such issues. So these were some of the technology challenges, complexity, frequent change, and lack of ability to test uh, and audit as frequently as required. But if we go to the uh, essence, uh, then the question is, how did you really get there? And here's a, where I want to be uh, philosophical for just one moment. Now, if we take a look at IT in general, whenever we encounter a sufficiently complex problem, we will end up realizing we need tools and automation. So that's a given in IT. The alternative cost is unacceptable. Uh, Excel style tracking of issues uh, is only scalable so much. And when uh, it gets, uh, the cap these capabilities are exhausted, we, we have to have the right tools. Otherwise, we don't have control. We may have hidden risks. We may have inefficient usage of our infrastructure. So why should managing availability and DR be any different? Uh, it's one of the most uh, significant spending area in NT in general over the years. It involves multiple technologies, multiple IT silos, business owners, uh, what have you. So it's definitely worthy of uh, the right tools. Now, taking a quick look into the uh, uh, toolkit and methodologies we have in place, we will quickly realize that there is much left to be desired. So what we already have today is, of course, awareness uh, of, of risks. There are some very well-defined methodologies for risk assessment and analysis, business impact analysis, and so on. We probably already have in place the right infrastructure that includes clustering and replication and so on. And most of us already have uh, a formalized process of testing, even though it may not be as frequent or exhaustive as we want, but we still have that. But there is much more that we don't have. Uh, and first and foremost is visibility into our configurations and status. So imagine working without documentation. I, I, I would bet that you don't have to imagine because it's, it's really important to document high availability in the R configurations on an ongoing basis. But without such documentation, if something breaks and we don't have the ability to take a sneak peek into the environments that just fail to figure out why it doesn't recover, uh, then we are lost, of course, or if we want to plan and our documentation is two years old, then obviously we can't do that. Uh, 
we don't have visibility into the readiness status of our application. So these are the foundations. Uh, another important aspect is uh, repeatable management and measurement. So all of us are, I, I would assume, have already defined our goals. What's the required RPO per application tier and so on, RTO capacity and so on. But do we actually measure whether we meet those on a daily basis? So how, how effective could setting up the goals be without actually measuring our compliance on, the, on an ongoing basis? Uh, and how effective can we, effectively can we manage the environment without proactively detecting risk? So this is another big area in which we are lacking. And the last, which is sometimes overlooked, is collaboration. So setting up a successful DR plan and successful high availability environment involves multiple disciplines, and it's not just IT. It's from business owners to business continuity practice managers to management to the IT systems. And without collaboration, it's extremely difficult to make sure everyone uh, is on board. So these are the missing capabilities and methodologies. And rather than uh, discourage you, I want to show you a sample environment in which practically all of those problems were solved. So it's a real uh, case study based on one of our uh, customers with whom we've been working for uh, several years now. And the three main problems we've just discussed were obviously realized. And the mitigation approach was a very interesting program set in place that includes the following principles. First was, was an insistence to automate and bridge the gap around each and every missing tool. And that's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I'm going to show you how it looks like in that particular customer environment. The second is affecting steering. So the customer has defined a business owner for the recovery operation. In this case, it was the BCP risk management team. And as a side note, I should say that uh, while it is a very good choice, others can also be applicable. We've seen other customers successfully manage a program with someone uh, uh, from IT or from other risk management divisions, but the important part is that we now have a business owner for the entire recoverability process that can review the status of operations on a daily basis and effectively make sure everyone uh, is collaborating. And the third element is an ongoing improvement process in the form of a quarterly steering committee meeting involving uh, multiple stakeholders to discuss processes and improvement. But remember that now we can do it with daily statistics, with measurements, uh, uh, and take informed decision on how to improve the infrastructure. So how does it all look like? So we have the BCP team, and the first view I want to show you is a business process dashboard being in use with that particular uh, environment. So the dashboard puts together the business services. So it all begins from uh, the business perspective and for each one of those business elements we have clear uh, and up-to-date indication of whether the environment is ready for recovery. Is the data safe? Do we have failover systems correctly configured and ready for use? Uh, is it really optimized? And do we actually meet our recovery goals like RPOs and, and RTOs and capacity and so on? So it's not just there for the program manager, but, but it's also visible throughout the enterprise. And you can actually uh, generate views for specific application owners, whereas they can see what's interesting for their uh, business unit. Uh, and, and being able to share that have some benefits, which we'll discuss a little bit later. The second element is a completely automated documentation systems uh, that keeps track of the IT configuration and ties technical elements into the business process. So you can actually take a look <coughs> into a, each business application, drill down to the server level, virtual machine, down to the storage level, replication, and recognized clustering, look at the current definition. So it's all there and it's all automatic, which is an important piece of the puzzle. Uh, 
The next thing I want to show is a little bit of the measurement capabilities. So with the understanding of the business services and how they break down into the various components from the individual disk up to the file system and database and server, each one of those cost, uh, uh, elements is constantly measured. So in this example, we see measurement of RPO. So we can take a look at the RPO of an individual file, a group of files, a database, up to the level of a server, a service, and so on. And it's measured on an ongoing basis. And it can actually be compared with our goals to detect violations. So that's also automatically measured on a daily basis. Uh, the next element is uh, automation of, uh, of risk detection and risk tracking. So obviously, we've seen the dashboard earlier. But you can actually drill down into each one of the business components and understand what current risks are currently alive in the environment. And you can actually further drill down. It ties in really neatly into the documentation module. So when the, whenever there is a risk that has been detected, it's documented inside this portal with the right diagrams, with the right description. So problems are here for, to be solved. Uh, and when they are solved, it's also tracked. So we can now try to take a look uh, on a periodical basis on what kind of issues do we have, how much time did it take to resolve them, how much effort did it take, perhaps you'd like to change something as a result. Now, obviously, with those mechanisms in place, it also becomes easier to collaborate. So one of the foundations was to tie in this portal into existing IT system. So obviously, uh, this particular solution involves integration into uh, uh, the email system. So obviously, the tool can send uh, individual alerts to individual teams, business owners, and so on. And it's also tied into the enterprise incident management. So whenever a risk is detected, assessed and realized as pertaining to the high availability in the R environment, it's also immediately tracked using the existing processes. Now, being able to share this information across multiple silos, including the documentation, including the ability to drill down into the details, allows for a much more effective collaboration. Now, the final element is a set of management reports that allows us to share the current status of the entire infrastructure with management, with business owners, uh, and with our IT teams, including statistics and, and, and measurements on a daily basis. So that's basically in a glance how it looks like. Now, just to uh, demonstrate some of the benefits, uh, let's just recall the problem in the process, trying to bridge the gap around tools, setting up a program, which translates to the following. The first, uh, which is perhaps in, in my mind the foremost, is dramatic increase in overall availability. So prior to setting up this program and taking the measures to document everything, uh, the average uh, was around uh, six outages per year, one every two months. Some of these were less visible to the end user or customers. Some were dramatically visible. And over the last 24 months, ever since this program has materialized, there has been none. So definitely, that's worthy of attention. The second area in which dramatic improvement was achieved was around the efficiency of the testing and auditing process. So uh, from several hundreds of rejects as the result of a periodical annual test, the number dropped down to about 5%, which actually means that testings, which is actually the third bullet down there, and on time. We don't have to spend too much time finding root cause. The environments are much more ready to begin with. And so the tests are more successful. Or there is a need for far less retesting. And as uh, a side bonus is also around 70% decrease in the amount of time spent preparing for those exercises, Just plainly because you don't have to document everything in advance. It's all there. The third element, which was actually not uh, anticipated when the program began was also direct saving in storage, in servers, in replication bandwidth. Uh, 
uh, and in certain misconfigurations around high availability in DR that resulted in poor performance. So, but that was definitely uh, not a primary goal of the program. And so, with that, what we'd like to do is move to the questions and answer section. Again, we'll take some time. I've seen that we've made good time. We'll take uh, roughly 10 minutes to pick up the most interesting questions. I see that we already have uh, more than 25 questions. I hope you'll keep them going. We'll stay online to answer uh, the rest. And for those of you who will not be able to wait until that time, we'll also send responses offline. So no question will remain unanswered. Uh, and while we are uh, beginning this part of uh, the uh, webinar, just you can take a look at those links for additional resources. So uh, my dedicated team has put in some questions for me. So uh, the first one is easy to answer. The, there is a question whether continuity software can actually help companies define and build the current processes where this is just something we've seen. So uh, happily, the answer is yes. We were very active in uh, making sure this particular solution works correctly. Uh, some of the key elements we've shown you are based on our technology, so we are definitely here to help you reach a similar setting or uh, uh, one that will suit your specific needs. Uh, there is another question. Yeah, so there was a question about how much, which, which is, I think, a variation of the theme in a, in a respect. Uh, how much of what we've seen was an off-the-shelf uh, product as opposed to customized integration? Um, or in other words, how fast it would be to get such a program going? So luckily, I would say around 90% of what we've seen is already out of the box. So just the rest is just integration into existing tools and uh, some effort definitely into building the right practice and process. So you don't have to worry too much about uh, assembling the technology pieces. It's all there. Um, here's another interesting question. How many full-time employees were required to run this program? Okay, so I'm happy to inform that no additional FTEs were required. So uh, in this particular customer environment, there were about seven full-time employees already managing the risk. Uh, and setting up this environment empowered this group to do not only their daily job, which is substantial, it actually freed up some of their time, allowing them to take full care uh, of this entire process. So most likely you won't need to add anything to your uh, existing uh, team, but I, I would also say that on a daily basis, it doesn't take much more than half an hour, an hour a day to review the status. If you keep on doing it on a constant basis, it it's becomes uh, much more easy. So um, let's try to pick up one more question. Yeah, so there is a question uh, which is relevant around uh, the risk detection. So um, we mentioned, or you mentioned rather than that, uh, risks are automatically detected. And it sounds counterintuitive. There are hundreds of things that can go wrong. How can this be done? So that actually uh, could be answered with uh, slides I haven't shown you. The intent today was not to really discuss our technology, but rather how it's put to use. I will just say briefly that part of Continuity Software's technology is an automated risk detection engine, which will allow customers to automate any length of checklists you want on a daily basis, plus enjoy a community-driven uh, risk signature database of around 5,000 different risk signatures. So you can have those running at your environment on a daily basis. And if any of those known risks is found, it will be documented in the tool. And obviously, uh, you can document others as well. Um, moving on, so here's a question where I, I can't really answer for sure. I'm not an expert, but there is a question around, uh, can this help in compliance reporting? So uh, the answer is definitely yes. I, I uh, regret to say that I'm no expert in compliance reporting, but what I do know is that uh, 
many uh, of the enterprises we work with use capabilities of similar environments to uh, generate compliance reports with very little effort. So once you have a complete documentation of your business services, their current configuration, you know what risks are out there and you can prove you are aware of them and you know exactly what needs to be done to comply and you can actually get that on it in a few clicks. Uh, it definitely helps. Uh, so I will try to uh, gather some more material offline and, and for those of you who have been asking questions around that, we'll send you the materials. Um, so there are questions about or even incredulity around the automated documentation. So how can this be done if the environment changes so much? Does it rely, there is another question on this similar subject, does it rely on an existing CMDB, we don't have any. So I'll just try to answer the two combined. So obviously if you already have a CMDB initiative and tools in place, we will definitely make use of those. So if you have already documented your business services, uh, we'll just tie it into uh, this environment and get you all the views around that. If you haven't, then our basic toolkits also includes uh, its own proprietary CMDB, so whereas it's not a full-fledged solution uh, and I'm sure it won't solve all of your problems, it does enable documenting all the dependencies between IT and recovery requirements. So you can call it a high availability and DR CMDB. So you can get that or you can tie in the two. Um, so let's pick up one or two more before our time exhausts. Um, yeah, so I think it's also it's been partially answered. Can you talk a little bit more about reporting back to the specific business unit? That sounds interesting, but potentially complex, as we have a very complex business hierarchy. So again, it's actually uh, it has been partially answered. So if you have already went into the effort of documenting your existing infrastructure and modeling it, then uh, the more the better. Obviously, we can use that configuration. Otherwise, we will provide you with the toolkit to document complex hierarchies and in some of the environments we work with, we are talking about thousands of business processes with uh, hierarchies that go around 10 levels deep. So uh, it's not a concern. We can either import that or provide you with very elegant tools to centrally manage dependencies between business services. Uh, I think there is time for one more. Let's just shuffle and pick so our last one. Um, maybe that's been answered. My apologies. Yeah, well, that's a little bit technical, but still worthwhile. Um, well, we do have a uh, the R plan. Our the R side is typically powered off can you still measure RPOs and RTOs? So, so, well, the answer, the short answer is yes, definitely. So RPOs doesn't really require anything to be up on the other side. As long as you replicate your data or ship it off-site, you can track these processes from the source. So it's basically very, very easy when you have the right technology to measure everything uh, uh, and show the RPOs. Now, Interestingly enough, it's also possible to measure your RPOs. So just assuming you bring up your sites every now and a while, whether it's once a year, we can actually capture the configuration of those particular sites and compare them on a daily basis uh, with your environment. So if something has changed in your production environment and your recovery environment is turned off but not really current, you'll be able to tell that. So uh, with that, I believe we've uh, reached our time limit. Uh, so, Iran, do, do you would you want to say a few last words about those who are interested in more information? Uh, sure. Thank you, first of all, Duran. This was very enlightening. Uh, so, those that are interested in more information, you you have um, ways to contact us on the screen in front of you. Uh, uh, Doron, are you still uh, going to stick around and, and respond oh, to sure. any questions online? Sure. We, we have a team of about uh, eight people here furiously answering questions. So just bear patience with us. We are typing in questions to you, uh, answers to your questions 
uh, right now. I hope some of you already uh, uh, received those, and we'll keep on doing it until we see the crowd thins. Uh, and at a certain point in time, we'll just uh, uh, kindly ask you for some contact information and can send those offline. So bear patience if you want to stay online. Okay, great. So again, thanks everybody for joining us today, and um, we look forward to content to connecting with you uh, in future opportunities and and offline as well. Thanks again, and have a great day. Thank you.